<laughs> and welcome back to the 25 cards of Christmas. Today marks another day in December, that means I get a new card from Magic the Gathering. Let's see what we have in this package right here. Ah, Daxus. What a surprise. I remember this card fondly, only... Yeah, something doesn't seem quite right. Daxus used to be of Miletus, but now he seems to be of, well, nothing. With Commander 2015, Daxus has truly returned. Daxus as a character lived his entire life on the plane of Theros a world ruled over by powerful figures known as gods. These gods control everything on Theros from plagues, harvests, monsters, to even the very sunlight of the plain. Needless to say, the gods which make up the pantheon of Theros are indeed worthy of worship. Daxus, as many others on this world, lived in service to the gods, following their whims in order to gain their favor. Daxus and his family specifically followed the rule of Heliod, known as the Sun God. Heliod was the most commonly followed god on Theros because, well, everything needed sunlight. Through the devotion of his followers, Heliod grew in strength and eventually became the god of gods, leading the entire pantheon. In the temple city of Miletus, Daxus trained as an oracle of Heliod, attempting to understand, communicate, and translate messages from the Sun God. Daxus was also pretty handy with a sword, knowing heroes were oftentimes showed special attention by the gods for their courageous acts, he began to also train as a soldier. Around this time, another character was being shaped by the events of the gods, a young Elspeth Tyrell. She had just planeswalked to Theros for the first time, but it would be this pivotal moment which would change both her and Daxus' lives forever. As Elspeth took in her new surroundings, she became witness to an event not meant for the eyes of mortals. An epic battle took place in the skies above her, a clash between gods. She didn't understand what the conflict was over, only that the very heavens shook with the power and ferocity of these two figures. Fast forward ten years in the future, Elspeth had finally returned to Theros, but this time with a godly weapon in hand. This weapon was actually from a god of Theros, who had lost it during the battle she witnessed so many years ago. Although Heliod wasn't so pleased to see this mortal holding a godly weapon, he set her to a task. She was set to kill an ancient Hydra, one which was born from Nyx itself. Many other warriors had tried to slay this beast in the past, with none ever succeeding. This is when Elspeth would finally meet Daxus of Miletus. As she engaged the Hydra, Daxus saw the battle taking place and decided to lend a hand. Where so many others had failed before them, Elspeth and Daxus were triumphant, gaining the favor of Heliod. With Elspeth becoming the new champion of the Sun God, she traveled back to Miletus with Daxus. As Heliod's champion, she had secured her place at the Temple of Heliod, but still knew almost nothing about her new god. It took months of training, but with Daxus' help, she eventually understood what it meant to truly serve Heliod. The knowledge she gained was valuable, but in truth, Elspeth enjoyed her time spent with Daxus most of all. Together they grew closer and closer as the pair ventured throughout Theros in the name of Heliod. They discovered that Nyx-born creatures were terrorizing the hidden forest city of Setessa, while Minotaurs marched on Akros. The world seemed to be going to hell, but so long as they had each other, Elspeth and Daxus managed to survive. As the Minotaur seized the polis of Akros, Elspeth and Daxus were called upon to lend a hand. This is when Elspeth would fatefully meet a satyr named Xenagos. Posing as a prisoner with valuable information, she met with this creature who told her of a means by which she could defeat the Minotaurs without risking a single soldier's life. Taking the advice to heart, Elspeth and Daxus flooded a river which passed through the city, raising the water level and sweeping the Minotaur force from Akros. For their victory, the king ordered a huge feast and celebration in honor of Elspeth, the Sun God's champion. The people of Akros drank, ate, and reveled in their victory, while Elspeth and Daxus sat relatively quiet in their tent. It was here that the two finally realized their feelings for one another. 
embracing each other as lovers. But it was ultimately not to be, as Xenagos used the festivities to sneak to the champion's tent. There, he found the couple sleeping soundly, although he was pleased by Elspeth's willingness to follow his instructions, she would not be spared his wrath. The Satar entered her dreams and controlled them, forcing her to relive her darkest memories of the Phyrexians. Killing the monster in her dreams, Elspeth was horrified to find that she had inadvertently killed Daxus instead. Elspeth left the camp and started down the events which took place during the Theros block. Now, this wasn't the end for Daxus, because on Theros, death is never truly the end. His spirit was brought to the Underworld, to forever be watched over by the God of the Dead, Erebos. While in the Underworld, Daxus made some kind of dark deal with Erebos, allowing him to return to the world of the living. Daxus was now a returned, a type of Nyx-born zombie. The bargain Daxus made with Erebos was that he could return to the world to forever search for his love, Elspeth. But, in a cruel twist, Elspeth in fact replaced him in the world of the dead. So now, Daxus wanders endlessly searching for a lost love who was now in the place he could never return to. Well, for Daxus, even through death, he was still home for the holidays. So, I guess he deserves a spot on my Christmas tree. Well, thank you all for joining me on this fourth card of Christmas. I'd like to remind you all to stay tuned tomorrow when we go over an elemental from Zendikar. As always, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, Sybin here just letting you know if you liked the video, you can support future content by liking it and sharing it with your friends. You can also support this channel by visiting my sponsors over at abugames.com. ABUGames.com is a leading online store for all things MTG, and without them, this series wouldn't be possible. You may even consider following me on social media or becoming a patron on Patreon. Through those means, you can stay up to date with the channel along with gaining access to special events and giveaways. You can find those links in the description below. Regardless, I wish you all a happy and safe holiday season.